Hi, brothers and sisters. This is Mary Hernandez with Genesis Kingdom. And today's topic, I picked the everlasting kingdom. <clears throat> By the way, blessings um, and healing and guidance from the Holy Spirit sent your way. And that you receive this message um, and that he sends you spiritual gifts as far as... Um, spiritual blessings, <laughs> you know, um, to help your gifts continue growing in a relationship with him. Um, and they're powerful and it's beautiful. So today's topic is everlasting kingdom, the new heaven, the new earth. Um, and I just picked the everlasting kingdom. So it's two Peter one, Simon Peter, a servant of an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that that have obtained like precious faith. But with us, it says, but with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied it unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus, our Lord, according to the divine power that he has given unto us in the things that pertain it unto life and of God lines. But through the knowledge of him that he had called us to his glory and virtue, whereby it has given us into exceeding grace great and precious promises and by this that you are partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption of this world through lust and besides this giving all the diligences add to your faith virtue and the virtue of knowledge and to the knowledge of temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godlines and to godlines brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity and these things be in you, and they abound, that they may make you, and that you shall neither be barren, but neither are fruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh this things is blind and cannot see, which is means spiritual blindness. Afar off he had forgotten that he has purged in the his old sins. That means we're still working under the old nature and not the renewing of our mind. And that we're still being spiritual blinded and who he is and who is in us and who we represent royalty, heaven on earth, um, world leaders, world changers. And he wants you to see that. And how do you see that is by the renewal of your mind. When you see that, then you love your brother. You love your calling. You love everything that he destined you to do, that you're going to exceed abundantly in everything that he created you to be. That's what it means. Wherefore, Rather, brethren, give diligently to those that are calling an election, sure. But if you do these things, you shall never fail, ever, ever fail. For an entrance that you shall be ministered unto you abundantly and into everlasting kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior Jesus Christ. Wherefore, I will not neglect to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, yet you establish and present the truth. But he, he says, yeah, I think, I think it and meet as long as I am in the tabernacle to stir up and putting you into remembrance, knowing shortly that I must be put off in my tabernacle. But even as Lord Jesus Christ had showed me, moreover, I will in devour that you may be able after the disease to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables, but that we have made known unto the power of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we are eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God and the Father an honor and the glory, that when there comes such a voice to him with from the excellent glory, that this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. The voice which came from heaven that we heard, and that we are him and holy in mount, that we also more sure have prophecy, whereunto that you dwell and you are to take heed, but unto the light that shineth in dark place, but unto the day of dawn and the day the stars arise in your hearts. Knowing this first is no prophecy of the scripture, it is a private interpretation. For the prophecy cannot come in the old time by the will of men, but the holy man of God that spake that we were moved by his Holy Ghost. So if you're still speaking, you know, like kind of the old ways, then you're still living in law and 
you know, God is not of the law, but of the Spirit of God, but in Christ that dwells in us. 2 Peter 2. But there was a false prophet that was also among the people, but even as they shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall um, bring a demano hearers, and even denying the Lord that brought them, and to bring upon themselves a swift destruction. As many shall follow their promiscuous ways by reason by whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. But through the covenants shall they have faked words, make merchandise of you, who judgment now for us long time lingered not, but the damnation of the slumbered not. For it is that God that spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell, and he delivered the chains, he delivered them to chains in darkness to reserve unto judgment. You know, he spared not the old world, but saved Noah and the eighth person and the preacher of the righteousness bring the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah unto the ashes, condemn them for overthrowing and making them an example unto those after that shall live ungodly. You know, it's, it's kind of like we're on the, the Noah and, you know, days and he's basically just, you know, it's almost like last warnings, you know, kind of like the last call. And we're not talking about last call of the world, but we're talking the last call into the heavenly world, you know. And, you know, I, I wanted to take a quick moment to apologize. Um, I don't know, you know, I'm just saying that if yesterday message came out to you kind of raw, just know that I didn't mean it that way. Um, when I try, like to get a, a point out. I'm very blunt in the way I speak. And and to be honest, I'm being honest with you, it was frustration. Frustration because I see some videos that are out there. And I see how the enemy lurks and he lurks. And some of you might know that you're being used as a vessel. Some of you might not know it, you know. And it's frustration because you see that I see your worth. I see who you belong to and you're of God, your royalty blood, you know. And you deserve so much better than to settle for things of the world. And that's the real truth. You know, it's kind of almost like, are you making a difference? You know, a difference in the spiritual realm to get you to see what it was that God got me to see. Because I was just like out there. My my mind was out there. I, I had to fight my way through this battle. And he gives you the victory. And he tells you how. Because I, I had to listen. You know, I had to listen to another things. I never thought I was going to get out of that. Honestly, when they would be like for you to move into the next spiritual, you know, level, you, you have to renew your mind. And I remember I was in a spiritual warfare and I said, I'm never, I'm never going to get out of this. I can't do this, you know, but I was already defeating my own mind by saying, I can, you know, you can, you know, but it was the not knowing. And this is just me letting you know what I had went through in the spiritual realm and how I got because I was like that. I can't do it. It was an attack, a spiritual attack over and over that I'm not lying to you. I would get the ear, you know, the earplugs. I would put them in and I would go to sleep because it was constant. There was days I couldn't even sleep. They were sending demons every side of the pocket that they had everything wicked, wicked, wicked. But I'm going to tell you something. Um. The reason why the talks, the attacks were so intense is because I wasn't in my calling. I wasn't praying as much. I wasn't worshiping. I wasn't singing. I wasn't sinning anymore. You know, I wasn't out there anymore, but I was just sitting watching TV. I was comfortable, not knowing that I was comfortable. I was comfortable. I was like, I don't know where all that is coming from, but I was getting comfortable in it. And he was saying, you can't do that. You can't do it. You know, so how do I do it? So reading the Bible. So I started reading it, you know, and then I was like, okay, now what? You know, I didn't do nothing. It didn't do nothing to me because I was supposed to stay consistent in it. It wasn't for me just to read it once. All right. It, it helped me. No, it was staying consistent in there, making that list. It tells you everything and how to do it. And then I, I feel amazing. I feel healed, you know. And just for you that are out there going through that, just know that I could relate, you know, and 
you staying in the Bible, it washes you and it cleans you. It's staying consistent with it and not giving up. You know, it says, For the righteous man dwelleth among them, and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day for their unlawful deeds. So, you know, it was vexed because of, because not only, you know, of sin, but it was also because of unbelief, you know, not unbelief that, you know, I didn't believe in my father. That was never the problem. I didn't know the Bible. I didn't know what it meant to be chosen. I didn't know. And there was more like, yeah, it's going to happen. But then, you know, life discouragements, it kind of brings you, okay, it's not. That's what it means by unbelief. We didn't stay consistent. And that's why he took me the long way. You know, don't get me wrong. I have asked that, you know, yesterday was one of those days, you know, the kind of, you know, you almost like get discouraged, but then you bounce right back out of it. And that's the truth. I'm going to be honest with you. You know, it's it was discouragement kind of like, man, <laughs> are we there yet? I asked that, but, you know, it's kind of like a low key, like, dang, you know, Father, I'm tired, you know. He knows. He knows. That's why he says, come on to me, all you that are worried and burdened, and I will give you rest. Last time I was like, okay, give me some rest. Because <laughs> I was all like, it's not a demonic attack. It's me. I, you know, I want to know. And it was me just throwing a little fit. It was. And then I was like, hey, you know what I'm saying? It was frustration. And, and sometimes it is the not knowing. The not knowing is when is it today? Well, it wasn't today, Father, I'm still believing, is it today? But it's patience, you know, we're going to fall, but we're going to get back up. And I tell you, I have weak moments too. And don't feel that, you know, it's not anything that you're not doing because I'm not sinning. You know, I'm in my calling, you know, I'm not getting distracted by things in the world. I'm not taking off to go out. I don't do anything like that. Like literally what people call born and I call it beautiful because that's how I fell in love with my calling. That's how I fell in love with the Bible. That's how, you know, I stay persistent, you know, I'm relaxing a little, you know, but I try not to relax too much because I know we're in a spiritual warfare, you know, and it's staying consistent with it, you know, the, the, the witchcraft they always tried, you know, it's just staying in and praying and, and worshiping and singing to him. I do all the time, but now it says the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations to reserve the unjust in the day of judgment to be punished. But shively them that walk after the flesh is the lust of the uncleanness and despise government presumptions that are them that they swell well, that they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are a greater power of the might, is to bring the railing of the accusations against them before the Lord. You know, so of course they're going to throw temptation at you. God doesn't. God gives you a way out. God gives you a way. But that's it. The lust pulls you back in. What is it that you're craving for? What is it that you want? Are you craving to finish your course and to serve him right? Or are you going to keep going back to what you're used to? Because it's not there anymore. It is literally gone. If you go back, you're going to perish just like Lot did, meaning spiritual, because we were dead to sin, not physical. You know, it's almost like you're walking around without a soul because you're still being pulled back to what you used to be, you know, and that's how they get us. So when the accusations come from the accuser, the father that, um, the one that kills, steal and destroy, not our father, Jehovah. So when that day of judgment comes, guess who's going to be right there pointing fingers at you? They did it for me and they will do it for you. You know, but this is the natural brutal beast that may have been taken and destroy and speak evil of the things that they understand now, but they should utterly perish in their own corruption. That they shall dis they shall receive the reward of unrighteousness if they have counted in pleasures to riot in the daytime. Spots they are, and they blemish supporting themselves in their own deceiving while they were the feast with you. Having eyes full of adultery that they cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls. They're the heart that they have exercised, the covet or practice of the cursed ch children. You know, it it's got to give. You know, you got to break that generational curse. Whatever it is, you know your family better than anybody. You know yourself better than anybody. You know, 
Mine was the curse of poverty, you know, that it w it always was. But believe it or not, I always knew my father Jehovah has always been in control of my life. So while it was going good, I praised him. If it was going bad, I still praised him. I said, well, God didn't want me to have it, you know. Uh, I was raised that way to be content with what I have because that's the dealt the cards that God had given us. I didn't know what it meant that a generational curse came because our families had been dying in the wilderness due to sin. So if you want that change in your family, you have to break that generational curse. And it starts with you. You know, like say, even when you you come upon your blessings, don't go back to what you used to be. Stay that person, change it break it. Show your family that you are a great example of it, not repeating the same shit because they watch you. They're learning from you. You know, you have to be that breaker in the family. You know, you, you have to change it, you know, and I always put, for example, my family, you know, I think I could say it, <laughs> you know, I was raised by my grandmother and she taught me respect, morals and values and be content with what you have. Never envy anybody, never be jealous any of anybody, you know, and that's who Marcella was. You know, you, you go to school. She was a perfect wife. She took us to school. She went to our meetings. You know, the only time we went somewhere to church or the store, you know, she lived it. She was that example of a perfect wife, of a perfect mother. She was everything that I want to be, that I became, that I was, you know, because of what I seen her do. She led that example. And she would tell my aunties, don't go hoard around, you know, but she would say, we love, <laughs> you know, and she would always like Bible verses, you know, that we were raised with. Now, when my mother brought me to Colorado when I was 11 years old. Um, she was different. You know, she wasn't loving. She was real cold. Um, a lot of other things that um, it'll be out in my book or when God says I could say, I'll say more. You know, um, she was everything that I didn't want to be in a mother with all respect. You know, she was everything I didn't want to be. You know, I wasn't going to turn blind to my children. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I broke that because I, I would love my kids unconditional. You know, yes, we, I, you know, we yell, you like, da, 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 you know, I'm not saying like that, but I'm saying that I never turn my back on them that they had before I did. I put them before me. You know, I always did. Even when they were old enough, they were still coming back home. Mom, I need help. Mom, I need this. I did it. You know, I didn't say you already passed 18. There are babies forever. You know, they come to you because they need you. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, at the end, I had taken that for granted because I let the addiction bring me down because of my divorce. And then I went all the way down and then I lost my children, you know, and then I was like, you know, it, it shattered me. It broke me, but God needed to heal me. And now I got a second chance to do it and finish it right. What I had started is being an amazing mom, but be and not take every single moment for granted and be everything that he had created me to be. You know, he gave me my babies and I love them so much. You know, you, you have to be that a chain breaker, the world breaker. You know what I'm saying? It says, which you have forsaken the right way and you have gone astray following the way of Blam, the son of Bozar. But they loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity and dumbass speaking, which man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. And yes, <clears throat> that is, <clears throat> excuse me, that is 2 Peter 2, 16. <laughs> now I'm at 17. These are the wells without water, clouds that carried with tempests, into whom the mist of the darkness has reserved it forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allured through the lust of the flesh and through much wantons. Those that were clean escaped from them and who live in error. They were, it says, while they promised them liberty and themselves are servants of corruption. They're still being servants to the call to slavery, to the darkness. For whom a man is that overcome of the same that he brought in bondage. For if after that we have escaped pollutions of the world 
but through the knowledge of Lord Jesus, the Savior, Jesus Christ, and again entangle therein and overcome the latter end of the worst with them that are the beginning. For then it was, it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they had known it to turn to the Holy Commandment and deliver unto them. You know, it's like kind of like getting saved and knowing what is wrong. It had been better for you not to have known. You know, that's like almost a letdown to our Father. You know, it's like saying, you know, for those that didn't know you were sinning, fine. Now he's saying no more. Like when he told me no more with my ex, you know, he said, now, you know, and once he opened my eyes that I was sleeping right with the enemy, I had no clue. But once he told me, hey, you know, you are, I, I let it go, you know, and that and that's how you got to see it. You know what I'm saying? They were being used as vessels, whether they wanted to or not. It happened, but he said no more. He knows more than what we do. It's just kind of like us with our children. You know, we tell them, hey, don't do it, but they do it anyways. You know, and then when they come back crying to you, as much as we want to say, I told you so, you know, we do that. We're parents, but I didn't because it hurt me to hear her cry. It hurt me to know that she was hurting. It hurt me that I was right. You know, I didn't want to hear that. You know, I wasn't like the other parents like I told you so, you know, I didn't want to hear it that I told you so. I don't want to hear her tell me, Mom, you were right, you know, because she believed. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to believe for her, even though I knew different. But I said, hey, maybe, just maybe, you know. It says, now, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteous than after they had known and to turn from the holy commandment that had delivered unto them. But it happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is to turn into his own vomit again. That so and washed her woolly into the mare. Drag you back to the pit, back to the same thing that he has just delivered you from. He's like, wow. You know what I'm saying? Like that's powerful. But um I'm gonna do part two of um a video. Um and um, we'll see you. <laughs> I was going to try doing it, but there's not enough time. It cuts me off at 30 minutes. So, but have an amazing day. Um, and then I'll see you guys here in a few. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.